maybe the option to choose megas at, cer at a certain point because then it's like once you unlock it y the skill comes into play of do i use my mega or not and then it's and then it comes down to which mega did you choose and i also think they need to get rid of the fact that you can have two in a game like in your squad uh, it's it should be capped at one hands down no questions asked welcome back everybody to episode two of the squad cast if you missed episode one it will be on full frontage's channel we will have a link in the description make sure you watch that as well if you are enjoying the squad cast content in this video we are going to break down the competitive scene as well as the consumables and our pay to win squad Buster Zits. Starting it off, we are going to talk about the consumables inside of Squad Busters and does it make Squad Busters pay to win? Full French, what are your thoughts on this? So I've had some mixed opinions about this um, because I've seen people with Megas like just dominate a game and get first place. And then I've seen people with Megas get sixth place because nobody wants to fight them. Um, so it really depends. I feel like it depends on like the person's approach. Um, and if you can't get control and aren't aggressive with mega units or anything like that, um, you could still finish below the top five and lose your win streak. I was playing a game earlier and somebody was chasing me and they were, they were just like not letting up. Like they had hog rider and chicken and Colt and I had Greg and a bow and I was like, I'm not in a good position for this fight. Uh, so they were just chasing me down and it was like, it had just hit 60 seconds into the match. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna pop a fusion key and get them off my back. So I popped the fusion key, grabbed a fuse barbarian, and then that got them off my back. So I will say that part of it was nice because it kind of helped them like disengage with me from the fight. But then towards uh, like, uh, there was like a minute and 15 left in the game and I found a mega primo and I ended up finishing that game in fifth. So I used a fusion key and a mega and I still finished in fifth place because I couldn't like I wasn't able to build up my squad in the best way that game because I was getting chased for half of it. So I lost some time on farming and everything like that. So it kind of feels like one of those situations where the consumables are not like a consistent tool to help you get first place every single game. Um, because I see people like fail with them time and time again. I failed with them personally. I don't think it's super pay to win, but I also don't think consumables make that much sense like I, I mega units to me like they're really strong they're really overpowered you can have two in a game it just doesn't feel right for me personally uh what do you think well i think that consumables don't really belong and here's why i was playing a game today yeah. and I was teetering around fifth place, fourth place, and really struggling to get back into the game. You know, I popped the fusion key, and that kind of made my army just strong enough to control the middle for, you know, when the gem mine was finally going to come out. And it allowed me to get on the board and continuously, you know, take down, you know, my opponents or, or not have them come after me. And then again, I popped another one later on inside of the match. So now I had two huge units inside of my army. I didn't have a mega at the time. Uh, the nobody in the game thankfully had a mega but i was easily able to control the flow of that game with just those two fusion keys and that's just kind of one of those things where is it is it something that you know i don't even think they were fusion keys sorry about that they were just regular you know just regular keys that fused up both of my units so then i mm -hmm. you know were able to get extra chests because the gold you know it resets on the chest and i was able to you know easily just progress through that i'm not really too concerned about the consumables as much as i am of the megas i think mm -hmm. the megas are a complete just absolute strong unit that needs to get toned down infinitely because it's kind of one of those things where yeah it's cool you have one mega two megas three megas but in about a week and a half from now when your free to play megas are out and you know you're struggling to get that next one if i'm a player who's trying to get trophies and pushing really really hard i'm using a mega every single game it, it, you know if, if it allows and that's going to give me a severe advantage on my opponent and that's just something that's kind of awkward for me because when you're playing on the top level 
time doesn't matter at that point if somebody gets one mega unit in a match and i can't get one because i am out of megas and i had the opportunity to in the game that's going to you know i'm never going to beat that squad no matter what yeah. i do you're just not going to beat that squad one-on-one -on -one. and that's kind of the iffy part however though as you said if you get chased down in the early game i think the bigger problem that squad busters has is if you get chased in the early game for you know 30 seconds or whatever or if you have like a quick skirmish in the early game where they take out a squad member of yours and you take out a squad member of theirs or whatever you are so far behind that the yep. only thing that's going to bring you back into that match is a mega like that is it and i guess that's why they may have felt like the megas are necessary but you still need the time just like you said if you don't have enough time to get back into the match even if you have that mega people run away from you right like they see the mega unit they are running from you so you're not going to get gems so if you're still in you know fifth place sixth place and you have that mega everybody's running from you however yep. if you do have that big squad and you get that momentum you sit in the middle with that mega unit in your squad and nobody comes anywhere near the middle nobody goes anywhere near the middle unless they have a mega and you kind of just camp and that's what i feel like it's going to get to when a lot of these megas are depleted in people's armies and it's going to feel really pay to win then and it's kind of gonna have to change some way or the other because right now megas are way too strong and just like you said fusion keys also if everything is going right for you in the match and you use a fusion key and somebody else whose everything is going right in the match doesn't use that fusion key that's three more chests that they have than you that's huge yeah that uh, that's a that's a big advantage and i i will say that like the the fusion key like it it's a two minute cooldown so you can only use one fusion key per match so i i do like that part i like that they bounce they thought about that to balance that aspect um but yeah I, when we had the the private play test and that's when we found out about megas i didn't really like personally i didn't really feel like they made sense i was like what like what's the purpose of them because like i've played games where like i was like kind of like like second and third and i would get a mega for my chest and if i looked at the score and i was like i'm really close if i get this mega and somebody else fights everybody's gonna run for me so i passed on the mega i opted not to take the mega because i was like i want to put myself in a position where i can still fight and take gems if i need to so i can get first place and then in those situations it was very close but i was able to slowly pick off some of the the first through fourth members of the squads and get some gems from their army and eventually get first place and i feel like i was able to do that because i didn't have the mega because if people saw me with the mega they would have just ran away so it's interesting that like not choosing a mega because of those situations is part of a strategy i'd almost be more happy to see something where megas are something that are unlocked over time and they take time to unlock versus them being a consumable and that way when somebody unlocks a mega uh, there's still a chance that it could appear, but it's not a consumable. So it's something that everybody can have once they unlock it, but it's not something that's like you use it and it's gone because then you want to make sure everybody kind of has an even playing field. Because like you said, when you get to the end game, when you get to the squad league and everything like that, if somebody uses a mega and you just don't have any left to consume, then that's going to be a huge disadvantage for you. Um, so I'd almost like to see megas be a part of like people's squads. And then if a mega is played into battle, then maybe it's something where it's like a mega has been played. Like the announcer comes in and it's like, it tells everybody a mega's in play now. So then you can kind of plan your strategy and be like, okay, I need higher DPS or now I should get my mega too. Um, and then you could maybe the option to choose megas at, cer at a certain point. Cause then it's like, once you unlock it, the skill comes into play of do i use my mega or not and then it's and then it comes down to which mega did you choose and i also think they need to get rid of the fact that you can have two in a game like in your squad uh, it, it's it should be capped at one hands down no questions asked yeah i think megas should be i think they're okay if they were the power of a fused unit with an extra ability so let's just say yes. Let's just say if you are El Primo, right? And if there's an El Primo, you know, the, the LT Gray, you know, you yeah. have that with that ability, the extra stun, you know, the extra long stun and the, and the elbow. 
that's it but have it just as strong as is if it was a a, va a fused el primo you don't need to have it stronger than that you just have to let's just say make the skill stronger and make it cool looking because honestly megas as fun as they are as awesome as they are the fun factors there but the fun factor is going to fade real quick when you push up higher and higher and higher and you just keep losing to somebody who has that i don't think el primo is even the best one i think the chicken where you're able to get that infinite speed to where you're able to just take down everybody you know if you have a chicken in your army and you already have a strong army nobody can go anywhere near the middle of the map like unless they have yeah. something because you're too fast for that for however long you have those golden boots going for like you can't go anywhere near you know the middle of the map and i feel like the game right now is a great game they just need to tone down the megas with the keys they need to figure out you know how to do that maybe a little bit better i would say maybe fusion key even later on in the match you know something to make it more balanced but I don't think there's a huge pay to win in the early game, but I do feel like top, 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 top tier gameplay, there is going to be that level of pay to win because there are going to be people who are going to use a chest every single match. And let's just say if me and you have complete equal skill, if we play 10 games, the person who opens up the chest is going to win a minimum six of them if not more than the other player just based on having that advantage throughout yeah the key the keys feel like a like a slightly weird advantage it's hard to explain because like there are some situations where i feel like keys don't matter because like essentially they're i, th I think they were added in to be a comeback mechanic mm -hmm. right because it's like if you if you get into a fight and you bust a squad and so you had like three fusions, two regular units, uh, and one of your fusions goes down, and one of your regular units goes down, uh, but you won that fight. Then it's like, okay, you just, you were aggressive enough to go fight somebody, and now you're set back, because of somebody who didn't fight, they have all of their units. So now they're at a much bigger advantage than you. So I, I feel like keys were implemented in the sense of like, the comeback, but maybe the way to supplement that is, however many units you lost in that fight, you get the key back. So if you lost a fusion unit, instead of it dropping a free key, maybe it drops a fusion key. Like, I don't, I, I'm not a coder, so like, I don't know if that's possible to code, but then it's like, it rewards you for fighting, but it doesn't set you so far back. And then it's also not a paid consumable that you have to then pay for and essentially make the game pay to win but instead it rewards you for actually being the aggressor going to take fights and then not setting you insanely far back i don't know if that's the answer but i feel like that's a little bit more fair than having people pay for it yeah i think honestly i don't so i don't even mind so much the fact that you can pay for it but you can't extend a lead, right? Because if you're just farming the entire game and then you open the key, like you said, you're gonna be so far infinitely ahead of anybody who fights. I think it should be unlocked. So you're still able to pay for it how you are now, but it has it can only be unlocked if you do a certain amount of damage to enemy squads in the match, right? So that means you have to fight. Yeah. Either you bust one squad character of another team or you do X amount of damage. That way, if you're not fighting, you can't even have the option to use the consumable because you're already, you know, in first place, just farming, not taking these engagements. Because really the only time you need it as a comeback mechanic is when you get into fights. So if you're not in any fights, A, you're already ahead, and then B, you're gonna use a chest, that doesn't feel right. So I do agree that there has to be some sort of stipulation on being when to use the keys. And if it is for the comeback, I feel like that is acceptable to have in the game. I feel like yeah. that wouldn't be super pay to win because what that would be is, is all right, I am fighting so I can get rewarded. However, that would still feel a little awkward, but it wouldn't be as detrimental as it is right now in the game. Yeah, I I, th I think that's like the bottom line with it is it need like if it's meant to be a comeback mechanic, which I can see I can see that aspect of it, right? Like it rewards people and it gives people that opportunity to come back. Like 
if you went into a fight, you just lost some people, here's like, you can use the item bag to get back into it. If that's the intention, then yeah, it should definitely be tied to actually doing damage and rewarding people for taking down a squad or at least trying to fight rather than like you said some people can just sit there and just farm up a bunch of keys and get a bunch of units because they just paid a lot of money to get it uh well not a lot but you yeah. know what I mean. it's, it's not that much yeah absolutely i know in our first episode of the squad cast we talked about the competitive nature of squad busters you mentioned specifically that just in day two alone you were watching players be able to move around your army and position them correctly to take out your back line first which really leads to the question of do you think squad busters can be a competitive game and if so how competitive yeah and i think when people hear like competitive for a game i think people's immediate thought is esports and i i don't think squad busters is going to be an esport and i think that's okay like not every game has to be super high competitive millions of dollars prize pools everything like that like it's fine for a game to have like a competitive aspect and just be like a casual competitive game and i think that's what squad busters is going to be right i think it's actually in the description of the app store it's like a battle party game like they're literally calling it a party game which is what my kind of first reaction was when i saw it i was like this is a party game they have the party feature in game and like i just imagine this being like a much more entertaining among us like among us is like funny in the sense that like you know you accuse each other and everything like that like that like there, there's a competitive aspect in Among Us, I guess, if you want to go that far to the extent of like being able to like trick people and it's like a psychological game and like you're you're convincing people that something happened when it's not actually what happened. But like in Squad Busters, like I see it being a super fun game for creators to uh, host events for their communities and be able to just have like enjoy watch it because watching Squad Busters is very fun. And I can just imagine like Somebody will do it at some point, but they'll get a group of uh, content creators, put them all in a lobby and have some like crazy rule set and just be like, have fun. And that's going to make for some epic, insane content. And I'm just so excited for when that happens. So I think there is a competitive aspect to Brawl Stars, but I don't think it needs to be like the traditional competitive aspect that we think of when we see games like Clash of Clans, Clash Royale and Brawl Stars, where those are like esports because there's an actual like hardcore competitive like strategic analysis gameplay a bunch of stuff that goes into that um so i'm excited to see what competitive squad busters look like and yeah i think there is like a competitive potential to it well i do agree that the competitive aspect of squad busters is more of a party game especially you know with streaming and everything like that is going to be huge especially with you know, content creators getting together, like you said, to create, you know, tournaments amongst each other, even tournaments with, you know, our community members we might be doing in the future. I think that this is a game where it's going to be super fun. Now, as far as the competitive aspect of Squad Busters, it's to be determined. I don't think it's going to have the competitive impact as a Brawl Stars or as a Clash Royale, but I was playing since day one of Clash Royale. If you told me Clash Royale would have an esports scene on day one of Clash Royale, I would have looked at you. It, granted, it was a completely different time in the gaming, you know, universe. I would have looked at you and yeah. I would have been like, it's just a, a a mobile game. Like, what are you talking about? It's like a tower defense game. Like I've been playing, you know, for years. This is this is not an esports game. So you never know what could happen, especially with a, a game mode could be added in this to where it could turn competitive. Um, because there just needs to be a lot of replayability to the game, and a lot of that replayability is a competitive aspect to where people you know get better at the game and so on and so forth so i do think that squad busters will have a competitive scene do i think it's going to be as crazy as squad busters or clash royale no but i do think that there are going to be players who are going to be playing this a lot 
and it's going to get to at the top of this ladder because there is a leaderboard there is yep. going to be very good matches and i think that the skill is going to show in squad busters this might be a game where we might say in a month and a half from now wow there is more skill to squad busters than there is in clash royale brawl stars and clash of clans and that's something that i could see potentially happening because this game is real time you have your macro which is your farming and you know how fast you do that and everything like that and then you kind of have a real time micro which we didn't even think that much about within the mm -hmm. battle you know you move faster by saving your speed burst not moving around the map fast do you use your speed to move around the map do you use your speed to battle how do you position your troops in battle do you move there could be a variety of things that we still don't know this is only really day two versus you know normal players we played a lot in the private betas and everything like that where we really didn't play too much around real players and we're already seeing players get really good at the game in 48 hours i can only imagine that get more advanced so i don't want to rule out that the game won't be super competitive but as it is right now i think that the game is doing very very well as far as the skill level that it's taking to play which i didn't think it was going to go this fast i didn't think that there was this big of a gap that was possible but the more i play and the more people i play against i think that this might be a game that we look back at and say wow you have to balance your troops how many troops you have what characters you have and all of this and it changes daily it might take more skill than we think and that might create a you know replayability and a competitive aspect that we didn't even know about yeah and i'm really excited to see what that looks like and of course like as i introduce more characters that's definitely going to be a thing um with character rotations in heck even in private lobbies we could see like pick bands yeah you know if it, if it gets to that point where it's like you can like kind of customize what characters you have in the game and then it's like oh like i don't want to play against this i want to ban it and then like everybody gets a ban or something and like there's 27 characters in the game right now we know there's three more coming at some point we know there's tons of characters in the supercell universe that they could just toss into the game whenever they want they have an endless supply of characters that they could put into this game it's gonna end up being like a, a league of legends situation where there's over 200 uh characters in the game at one point and hey listen that's not a bad thing that's not a bad thing at all i'm super excited for i mean the supercell universe is is large and vast and i'm excited for more characters i'm excited for more modifiers more game modes i mean this game has endless possibilities and i think we're just at the starting point of squad busters and on our next episode we're gonna really dive deep into you know what has changed since this one i mean this is two days in the next one might be you know who knows how long from now but we are definitely going to be diving into just what is happening over time because we're going to be watching in real time every day so far has been vastly different from day one to day two how long is that going to happen for and how good how good or how skillful this game is going to be and we'll touch on the competitive scene you know in a couple of episodes when we get a better grasp of how it will shake out but thank you guys for watching episode two of the squad cast be sure to subscribe to full frontage because the next episode will be on his channel if you guys are interested in us talking about a specific topic please leave it in the comments below and we will feature some comments on the next video and talk about them but until episode three guys we will see you next time